We just wrapped our State of DCA report, and I have to say I'm kind of surprised by what we found. Monsters, Mission Breakout, where's Genie Plus? We toured the entire park, we checked every land, every attraction, all the news and views. This is our State of DCA report. Uh, what's more, Fresh Baked, this is a report that I have been really looking forward to, even more so than the one we did two weeks ago, that I thought I was really looking forward to that. But we've entered a period where the parks are changing, the, the makeup, the chemistry of the park is changing a little bit, and it's very fascinating to watch how things evolve, just like we saw two weeks, or last week, in the state of Disneyland, crowds went from here to there. We're still busy, but not quite as much, and I'm expecting to find something similar here at DCA today. Let's do a vibe check. This is Buena Vista Street at DCA on a Friday afternoon. It is presently 12.56. Oh, and there goes the monorail. <laughs> it is, the monorail on Buena Vista Street is one of the hardest things to get on film because there's no warning that just shows up. So I'm thinking this looks pretty light so far. Things feel pretty light. I was doing a little bit of B-roll shooting out here before we started rolling, and um, I can say that, yeah, it, it, it certainly isn't quite as hectic and crazy feeling as the past few visits, the month prior to this, even, even two weeks ago. But then again, we're just getting started. <laughs> no reason to come to a conclusion on this day in the first 52 seconds of this show. But it, I mean, do you not, do you not agree though? It's kind of a relaxed, chill vibe right here at Carthay Circle. Oh, I hear uh, Five and Dime on their way down Buena Vista, or uh, sorry, Hollywood Boulevard. Let's follow that lead. Oh, she's my favorite. Would you look at all these smiling faces? Good afternoon, Carthay Circle Lounge friends. Oh, happy birthday! I hope you enjoy your lunch. Well, good afternoon, princesses. Hollywood Boulevard. Before we head to the back lot, I want to get into something, a news story here real quick. We start looking at attractions and things like that. It, is, it has been 18 days since they started selling Magic Keys again. The Magic Keys stopped or sold out, I think I want to say after like two days, but all the other keys are still available. This is, hi. Fresh day. Hi guys, how are you? Uh, totally unexpected from my perspective. I mean. On the one hand, I feel like I thought it was nuts to stop selling them because of what I, you know, how I feel pass holders contribute to park operations and how the park, you know, feels and, and, and works every single day. But it just, it didn't look like they were at all interested selling them for just a couple of days at a time over a year's period. But now it's been 18 days and you can still buy an Inspire key you can still buy a belief key, and you can still buy an enchant key. I feel like, I think they're back. Is it too, is it too early to say? Can I go ahead and say that they're back in the magic key business? I don't know. I wanna say that, I really, really do. But the reason why I bring it up is because we often talk about you know, park capacity, you know, accessibility, that kind of thing. In the Disneyland, State of Disneyland reports, we'll talk about with the calendar and how that looks. I'm waiting to see if there is any visible effect, you know, on the crowds and just the way that things feel. A lot of people assume that this park is just dominated by annual pass holders, which not only isn't the case, um, my guess is it's probably less than 50%, but it, it would have been made even harder to do this to accomplish that feat considering they weren't even selling them and a lot of people were just dropping out. So I don't feel like this is a case where they're even just trying to sell the ones that they've lost and replace those. I feel like they're back in 
that business again. So we got a little bread and butter going on right now. We have a red car trolley and a red car trolley. They were doing a little shave in the haircut just now. So this one pauses while that one passes on the right. Because there's, there's just this one little stretch in the entire park where they can do this. They have this little dual track lane right here. That's right, he's got to stop first to unload guests. And this, okay, now this train, oh, there we go. That trolley can make its way to the merge point right here. Fascinating, right? That's really cool. They do. They have to. They have to go through all of this just so they can run two tracks or two trolleys at a time, which they don't always do. Let's go to Hollywood Backlot. Food and Wine Festival is still in full swing. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Looks like it's popping a little bit back here. <laughs> I'm always shocked whenever I see the back lot pulling crowds, but there you are. They they this is one way to do it is to bring Food and Wine Festival. That's just shocking to me. Like, what what are people doing here? I don't know. I'm not a fan of this land, as it's been well reported. Mike and Sully's to the rescue. Let's get into it. Already nothing like what we saw two weeks ago, am I right? Am I gonna, is this gonna be similar to last week's State of Disney Report where I keep repeating myself about how things don't compare? But last week, Monsters, Inc. was just diabolically bad. Worst I'd ever seen it in my life, I think. You know, where that lightning lane queue was, the, the, the post of wait time was forever. Today it is posted just 30, and we're definitely two sections, two planters worth shorter than it was before. Not to mention the fact that there was very little lightning lane out there. I'll show you again in a second. So, I mean, while 30 minutes looks attractive at the moment, I can tell you that this crowd is not moving. I see no people moving at present, <laughs> not a lot happening which is odd considering there isn't, as I mentioned, any lightning lane happening right now. This is it, and these are the ones, these folks here just recently showed up. These are mostly new arrivals. Makes me wonder if there's perhaps a breakdown, but still, obviously, lighter than we've seen. And as attractive as that 30 minutes does look compared to what we see in the past, that number, that 30 minute number kind of belies the reality, I think, a little bit. It doesn't, what we're seeing in that queue, it, it looks sticky. <laughs> it looks sticky. And I don't know, man. <laughs> I would be a little cautious about that. But then we walk out here in the rest of the back lot, and you can see there's hardly anybody in the queue right now to get something to drink at the Hollywood Lounge. It is often the case that this whole, all of that is full, and the, the mobile order queue is all the way out here. I'm standing about where the back of the mobile order queue would often be. You would wait 10 or 15 minutes for that. You could get a table. Last time we had lunch here, could not find a table. Lots of seating out here right now. Seating on the couches, seating at the high tops, seating at these tables. What's going on? I mean, that's very telling. To the casual observer, you know, you, you walk around and you're just like, oh my God, there's so many people here. But it's really not as many as we could or normally see. And we're just getting started. Red car trolley. Oh, that's right. We got to check in on the Hyperion Theater to see if they took those, the stanchions out, the, the chains, the queue chains that they put up last week for the awards ceremony that they were having here at the Hyperion. It looks like they are still up. I had asked a cast member if this was an indication that anything was happening at the Hyperion and he said, no, <laughs> it's not an indication. But there you go. 
They are still up. I want it to be, I want it to mean something. I want it to be the case where we're gonna soon be able to walk through the mezzanine balcony or orchestra. <laughs> oh, it's a good try, Disney, it's a good try. One of, the, one of my least favorite things about the whole back lot and everything, especially the Hyperion Theater with that fake facade out there and this right here, it's just, it's so... <laughs> I mean, I know it's supposed to be pretend. We're supposed to be pretending we're on a back lot, but the back lot itself is, is, is pretending. So we're pretending to pretend. That, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of low rent for me. <laughs> It's like Groot is out. Good job. Meanwhile, right next door, Mission Breakout looks light. I don't see a lot of action out here. Just a few guests right here in Lightning Lane. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Guys, look at 25 minutes. Should we go investigate a little bit? Well, the crowd is all the way back here. Oh, it's not. That's it right there. It's just this one little switch back and a little bit over there. Yeah, look at it. They're uh, just using just a portion of the back queue back here. Actually, it looks like it's filling up as we speak, so that 25 minute wait time is probably starting to do its work and attract more guests into the queue. So I would bet that 25 minutes is no longer accurate. We'll check back on the on the tip board in a little bit. Hey guys, we'll check back in a little bit and see. Uh, you know, when we evaluate the tip board to see if that's changed. But uh, five or ten minutes ago, this would have been a definite go. I mean, maybe it still is because even with more guests in there, you're still looking at just 35 or 40 minutes, which is a win for Mission. Let's go see what else is going on in the rest of Avengers Campus. Say that that vibe is continuing here at Avengers Campus. Fractionally less busy, still busy, but less so. We'll make our way over to Web Slingers, but I mean, what an open space here. There's no shows happening right now. They just finished the Avengers Headquarters show, so people have cleared out a little bit, perhaps. Seeing a posted wait time of 35 minutes for web slingers. But again, my eyesight says otherwise. They're using a lot of this queue back here. That's not a good sign, but it's not so bad. It'll be less bad if they're not using any of the rear bullpen back there, which I cannot tell, but I do not see any movement back there. I don't know if you can tell, but through the cracks, I can usually see people moving back there, of which there are none. So this is one of those conditions, one of those situations where it's scarier than it looks. You could fit all of this back there. You could fit everything that's out here in this part of the queue in that bullpen. Guests, though, are a little posted. And of course, the reason being, that 35 is gonna jump up here soon. There's your culprit. This is why that looks like it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and why you're gonna see a cast member soon sending guests into the bullpen back there. I wonder if I could wait for that, just kind of like what we did with Space Mountain before. I don't feel like, I don't sense, I don't see or hear any cast members though looking to make a move. It's worse than I thought. That, that lightning link queue does come out here all the way out of the walkway, not a good sign. 
This is a no-go. That 35 is a lie. And if it isn't now, it will be by the time you get in there. So much so that I think I'm gonna actually hang out here for a few minutes. I'm gonna post up in front of Web Slingers for five or 10 minutes and just see what happens to the back of that queue, the standby queue in there, and see what happens to the post the wait time and how long it takes for them to adjust that. 144, three minutes later, and they just bumped the standby wait time to 45 minutes, but they have not yet adjusted the queue. They're still filling in the, the queue here. I have not seen any cast members go back there to open up the bullpen. So I've been posted here now for eight minutes. As we noted earlier, the, the standby time went to 45 minutes. Not a lot of guests coming into standby, though, so the queue hasn't grown too much. It hasn't come out around the brick wall. Lightning Lane has been pretty standard as well. It's, it's, it's sort of maintained its, its density, which is not good for standby. Typically in this period, in that eight minute stretch, we should have seen them flush at least most of that lightning in a cube that has not happened. This is, a <laughs> this is not an ideal situation for web slingers right now. Well, that's Avengers Campus. May the force be with you. This is really neat. I don't come here at night enough, but that lights up at night. You know, everything's better at Disneyland Resort at night, but that looks really cool. You come here at night, that's all blue, everything's blue, it looks really neat. We'll head out into the parade corridor. Get a brief shot of the crowds that are here for Food and Wine Festival. Uh, hopefully you guys watched our Food and Wine Festival video that we did, we ate everything. If it's in a kiosk, like Uncorked California, or garlic kissed, or peppers caliente. We ate everything. That was a lot of fun. We, we had a lot of fun doing that. Tried a few things new, some hits, some misses. Check out that. Check out also our Boysenberry Festival video. We had a lot of fun with that one too. And then we'll come back to Carsland. in Route 66, where this feels kind of busy. Just like that exit leaving Avengers Campus, that felt a little bit busy. This does as well. Oh my. Our first stop is gonna be Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, and I oh my because the queue, here's something you don't see very often. Oh, it's sticking out of the threshold here. You never see that, but that's because just like at Avenger or uh, Web Slingers just a minute ago, they haven't, they're not using all the queue back there. You gotta get a cast member back there to let these folks in. I mean, it's just a 10 minute wait. But you can see they, it just curls right here and this comes right back around. They need to send some guests back there, although they have still closed that rear portion back there, though they don't often use that anyway, but that's just a junkyard back there, literally. <laughs> They've got a bunch of random stuff behind those walls. It doesn't look like they're, they're any kind of remodel going on there. Let's go see what else is happening. And the rest of Cars Land. consistent with the rest of the day that we've seen so far today. Not as busy, but still pretty busy. Lots of people in here. Uh, Cozy Cones was seeing some action. A little less action at Flo's V8 Cafe. 
Uh, you remember we had that whole conversation about mobile order in there and how <laughs> people were waiting for 45 minutes to do standby when you could have walked up and got it. Today is a pretty easy trip. It's making our way down Route 66. We'll go check in at the end of the street to see what's happening with Radiator Springs Racers and Luigi's Rollicking Roadsters. We'll just hang a right turn here at the end of Route 66. I'm expecting less than usual, and why not, right? I haven't even seen the back of the Lightning Lane queue, which is great. <laughs> that's always a good start. Post the wait time says 50 minutes, and that's a pretty good day for Radiator Springs Racers. I did, though, spot the back of the Lightning Lane queue right there, which isn't great. That's a lot of folks in Lightning Lane. It's not, it's not out on the Route 66 and getting to Cross Street, but that's still a lot. I'd rather not see even that many. But the back of the standby queue is invisible to me, which means that uh, most of that 50 minutes is being spent on the forward half of the queue. And you know there's not very many people in standby right now, but it's still 50 minutes because of the depth of Lightning Lane. Meanwhile, Luigi's Rollickin' Roadsters. Oh, well I can see the queue, which is not great. It says 20 minutes. But I'd rather not see this, <laughs> I must admit. This is not, this is not 20 minutes, you guys. Closer to 30 or 35, which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, 35 isn't bad compared to that, how things could be in other attractions, but it's 35 for Luigi's. You know, I don't, maybe it's just because the, the it takes forever to load gas, it doesn't have a very high capacity, but it always amazes me how Mater's, which is obviously, visibly, the superior attraction to Luigi's, and Luigi's is always a longer wait. Mater's is almost always 10 minutes. This is my favorite song they play here at Luigi's. I mean, mostly because of The Godfather, for those who know. If you know, you know. If you're a Godfather fan, you know what I'm talking about. That's the song they play at the wedding ceremony at the beginning of the movie. I love that song. Breathtaking, isn't it? It's incredible that you can be impressed with this every single time you walk through here, even if it's been a hundred times. Man, even San Francisco is feeling a little light. Although, I mean, I, I'm seeing what I what I thought might be open tables, but yeah, right there. There's one right there. <laughs> I found one right here. Oh nope, somebody sniped that one already. Oh no, they didn't. Look, there's tables, you guys. There are tables. It's not impossible. There's one right there. Man, this place is jamming. <laughs> wow. I know, I'm Another one right here on the edge, if you don't mind. In a little community seating right there. Table for two. Get a high top here at the Cerveceria. Hey. Great vibe here. Great vibe. There's a table right there. You get it? That was great. <laughs> that was great. Oh man. It's always a joy to walk through San Francisco and do my bi weekly declaration of admiration and love for that little mini land and this bridge. Let's go look at the tip board. All right, 
tip board as of 2.28 in the afternoon. This on a Friday. Golden Zephyr right behind me is working and at five minutes. Goofy Sky School, 40 minutes with a return time in an hour. That's pretty standard. I like to see that. Grizzly River Run, surprising to see that's only 25 minutes considering you know, it's a 70 degree day. It's kind of toasty out. It's nice. It's a, it's a, it would be a good day for a ride on the river. Return time in about a half an hour. Guardians dropped down to 35 minutes. Guardians is up to 35 minutes. I can't remember if we had predicted that or not. I felt like 25 was too good to be true. And as a matter of fact, now that I recall, yes, we were talking about how we saw that queue filling up while we watched it. So that makes sense. Incredicoaster at 30 minutes, that's long for Incredicoaster considering how the other queues are doing. Return time on that one of now. Ocean Whirlwind 15, Jesse's walk-on, Jumpin' Jellyfish, a walk-on. Aerials, a walk-on, five minutes, hey, look at that. No impact whatsoever on, uh, or of Lightning Lane on standby. Luigi's is up to 40, did I call that? Yes, I did. That was just a few minutes ago, guys. That was maybe 15 minutes ago that we were in Cars Land and I said, hey, look at that queue. There's no way that's 25 minutes or 20. It said 20. I said it was more like uh, 35. It's actually 40 according to Disney. But ma meanwhile, Mater's, <laughs> it's still just five minutes when it's the better ride. Get on Mater's, you guys. Goodness, uh, Monsters Inc. Still at 25 minutes. Remember we watched it jump up while we were watching the queue. I, or did it? I can't remember now, but still 25 minutes is light. Return time of a half an hour. Picture of Palerun that you're seeing right now as they're screaming. 30 minutes for standby. Raider Springs Raider Racers is at 50. We were just there. Return time of now also. Silly Symphony is a walk-on. Soren is 40. We'll check on that in a little bit, but that's pretty steady. That's actually good. Pretty good compared to what we've seen. Plus, not a lot of Lightning Lane happening there. It's just a 10-minute return time for Lightning Lane. Toy Story 45. We'll check on that. Two and a half an hour return time. And Web Slingers is closed, so <laughs> we can't follow up. I wanted to see if it would go up past that 45 that we saw, but it's closed. So those folks who got in that queue were hoping for a value got uh, got denied. I'm sorry to report. Now before we head over to Pixar Pier to check in on a credit coaster and Toy Story and all that, I just want to take a moment to appreciate Food and Wine Festival. I love these events. I've always proclaimed Lunar New Year to be my favorite, but I really, really enjoyed Food and Wine Festival this year. We were just talking about that. The thing that I noticed often, especially when I come down here to you know, look at the Paradise Bay, the World of Color viewing area, is to see all the people just hanging out. The Food and Wine Festival brings out that part of guests where they just want to be here. It's not about the rides or the shows or anything like that. They're not in a rush to do a thing. There's just so many people here just enjoying the, the food and the music and being together and taking pictures out here and I just love it. I love when we can embrace that part of going to the Disneyland Resort. It makes me really, really happy. Let's go to Pixar Pier. Getting your pictures taken <laughs> in front of the sign. That's so cool. Look how happy they are. I love it. Why am I lopsided? I feel like I'm crooked. You know, I really love this this camera, the DJI Pocket 3. I really love it, but it is it is possessed. It has a mind of its own. It does things that I have no control over on its own. It's Damien, Reagan, I don't know. I, I need to give it a nickname. But I, 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 it's either one of those two. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's tough, but it's still the best. For me, at least. Oh, she's so lucky. I don't know if I caught that in frame or not, but she had two. Pixar Pure Parfaits. It has been a minute since I've had one of those. Maybe for Pixar Fest, I'll get one. Coming up, stay tuned for Fresh Bakes coverage of Pixar Fest.
It's a festival for Pixar. It's always a great moment here, too. We started heading down this path. The photo pass is out in force today. I love this moment. You get to see the landscape of, of the crowds here. The sounds. I love the sound of the pier. <laughs> That's great. Oh, there you go. All right. So our first stop is going to be in Credit Coaster, and there's no single rider queue out here. Nobody's queued up for single rider. We saw a 30-minute standby, which I said seemed really, really high. That's a call to action to get here, in my opinion, because it's not 30 minutes, but it's keeping people away. If that makes any sense. Hi! So we'll pass through here. And the board has actually already updated itself to 25 minutes. But this is it. There's nothing out here, nothing in the lower queue out here. Most of this first riser and all of the second riser, obviously. I mean, that could be 25, I guess. But the good news is that there's very little lightning lane. We see some guests going in, but there's no backlog. Guests aren't accumulating here, which is great. Although that is actually a pretty steady flow right now that's coming in. So this might wind up being, in the end, near to or close to 25 minutes. While I was shooting that, it went down again to 20 minutes. <laughs> it's incredible. I said incredible. I think I do that often whenever I come to this attraction. Not intentionally, but I'm always finding things that are incredible here, and that just winds up being the term I use, but again, yeah, I uh, called it that 30 minutes. I saw that on board, so now that queue doesn't look like 30. Now, it will, in a minute, we're gonna come back here and see if that, if that winds up being true. But I, I feel like even at the, you know, where it says 20 minutes now, that queue will probably that'll jump back up to 30. Again, a call to action. 20 minutes is very attractive for a credit coaster, in my opinion. We saw 45 on the tip board for Toy Story Midway Mania, which also is a bargain. Oh my gosh. And now it's down to 30. What is happening? I have restrained myself from being shocked by the low wait times after that initial, you know, 30 minute wait at Monsters Inc. But uh, yeah, 30, 30 minutes, it went down. From 45 to 30, there's guests. They are using that rear or the interior queue back there. But it's moving pretty briskly. And what you don't see is anybody in Lightning Lane, which is the opposite of what we saw at Web Slingers when we saw that jump to 45 while we were there. There was a bunch of cat or guests in the Lightning Lane queue. So, man, this is, a, this is a go. In spite of the fact that it says 30, if you're in the neighborhood, I would be like, yeah, get in that right now. But it's always, you know, it's always kind of a crapshoot. One of the things that bothers me the most about Lightning Lane is that it's not consistent. You can't predict it. It could be zero or a hundred, you never know. And so you get into a queue like this, you're like, oh my gosh, it's a 30 minute queue. It could, hi, how are you? Uh, it could very easily be the case where you get in that 30 minute queue and then a bunch of folks get in the lightning lane queue and you're 30 turns into 60 and you haven't done anything wrong. You've made, you know, what would have been the right choice in getting in that queue. You've done nothing wrong and now your weight has doubled. That's kind of BS, you know what I mean? Like, imagine the days when there was no fast pass. Well, I, even actually, even fast pass wasn't that bad, but if there weren't any at all, you could get in a 30 minute queue and know it was never gonna be less than that, or, or more than that, I should say. It wasn't gonna get worse. It was 30 when you got in, and it's gonna be 30 when you're done. Might even be better. But you never would see the case where an external force would act upon the queue while you're in it, unless it's a breakdown. 
that external force will act on the cue and change your experience. And for you having done nothing wrong. And why, what, the reason why I made that distinction about you not doing anything wrong is because if you see a 60 minute standby cue and you know that lightning lane exists, you can make the choice to say, I don't want to get in that cue. That's not for me. I would rather wait and do it at a time. And then you wait for what should be a good opportunity and then you still get a 60 minute wait. It can happen, it happens a lot. 2.44 and we'll keep making our way down Pixar Pier. Still loving this vibe though. <laughs> I'm still, I mean, and there's no complaints about a, tw a 30 minute queue, I should say, by the way, at Toy Story. Happy to see that. I'm just, you know, get going on a little bit of a rant, getting on a soapbox, talking about how inconsistent Lightning Lane can be like that and there's nothing you or I can do about it. Oh my. Okay, so <laughs> it's somebody's birthday. Pixar Pal Around. 10 minutes is posted here on the left for non swinging. 20 minutes for swinging. That's the back of the queue, way down there by that exit sign underneath the yellow gondola. That's the back of the standby. Get in that queue. Absolutely, this is a go, go, go. Eh. Hey, at least that's not all the way up here and over there like it was two weeks ago. Light day today here at California Adventure, guys. A very light day. Just down the way, a Marshall Whirlwind says 15 minutes, and it's we're back to our old <laughs> setup here, where it's just up here on the platform. Actually, it's a little bit lower. It's it's not just the raised area. It's a one one switch back down there in the lower area. So that 15 is probably on the low side. It's probably a little more than that. Came back to check in on a credit coaster, and sure enough, the queue has definitely grown. It has it has drawn more guests. They're starting to work their way down to the lower area. But the back of the queue that I marked when we left just arrived at its ride vehicle in 16 minutes. At the time when we checked that, it was posted 25. It was 30 minutes when we checked the tip board. Got here, it was 25. Back of the queue got into a vehicle in 16. But I don't think that's going to last very much longer. The back of the queue now. By the way, that back of the queue, I would have put it yeah, it was right about there. And it's grown to about there. So it's still close to it. There's 20, 25 minutes. This looks bad sometimes. You look at this and you see that's a, that just seems like a lot of guests. But that really, uh, in credit coaster, because they run two vehicles, they run two tracks, they can load guests in and out pretty efficiently. And you can cycle those guests there in, in you know, all this right here in 20 minutes. Silly symphony swings. Posted at five, we saw that on the tip board also. No chance that's five minutes. That is at least 10, maybe 15. That's three cycles right there, I think. That's three rotations, so good luck on a five minute wait. They really need to update that board. It is 100% wrong and anybody can see that with their own eyeballs. That's the great thing about attractions that don't have lightning lane is that you don't have to worry about that that X factor as we were just talking about. If there's no, I, I, there's, you know, it's predictable. Whereas Lightning Lane is quite unpredictable. Jumpy Jellyfish looks like a walk-on. I'm always seeing a handful of guests right here in that queue. A few more strolling in. Goopies was closed. Let me check the tip board and it has no longer closed. And they probably had a short wait time posted and people reacted because the queue now, actually, I don't know if that's lightning lane or standby yet. I think that's lightning lane. Oh yeah, yeah. Boy, that's, that's a no go. Oh boy, that's a no go. I mean, the standby queue is not the worst I've ever seen. It's just the one, this one length and that one length and then bet you're on the, you're on the ramp. But uh, the fact that l the Lightning Link queue is just about as long, if you were to count the number of humans in each queue, that Lightning Lane 
is probably it, yeah, it's well, you know, standby is probably still a little bit longer, maybe by 40 or 50 guests. But look at all that movement happening up there. You can see Lightning Lane moving. They're gonna they're gonna flush that whole queue right there. This part of it anyway. They're gonna get them all. And these guys, you just have to hang out, hang out and wait. Welcome to Disneyland. I mean, you could get in that. You could you could do that for thirty bucks. It's all it takes thirty dollars. I want to do a whole video on comparing Genie Plus at thirty bucks to Universal and Knott's Berry Farm. They have well, actually Knott's is now adding that whole individual Lightning Lane thing as well. Well, individual fast lane, single use fast lane they call it. But I would like to do a, a very informed, all right. <laughs> an informed evaluation of that because there are wins and losses hi uh gd plus is certainly a, a better value because you get basically the same experience that you get for express lane and fast lane you get to ride every ride you know you get to walk on but it's significantly cheaper sounds great actually but you still have to pay i'm trying to think of a downside I mean, yeah, it's better, right? Isn't it? Obviously, isn't it? Zephyr, walk on. Past couple of trips through, we've seen a lot of people down here in the lower level. We saw Little Mermaid posted at five minutes. It has grown to a whole 10. Nobody here in Lightning Lane. And we'll just do a little drive-by right now. I see a very brisk-looking standby queue up there. They are moving. Very little influence on or by GD Plus today. And that seems to be the story for most attractions that we've, that we've evaluated today. I feel like maybe only Web Slingers was the only one. A Rainier Springs a little bit, but it was still better than I've seen in the past. But for the most part, they're not selling a lot of GD Plus today, which is really interesting because I felt like they had reached... Hey, what's up? How are you? I, was, <laughs> I forgot where I was. Uh, well, she's belting it over there. That's food wide happening. But I, I thought they had reached a point where people started just to accept GD Plus and everybody was buying it. And Because as I mentioned, it's still a pretty good value, or it is a good value when you compare it to other passes like it. By the way, speaking of Little Mermaid and Lightning Lane, there are walls up outside the queue. I have shot this from the Pixar Pal route, but I haven't had a chance to edit the video yet, so I don't know if what they're doing here is constructing a proper Lightning Lane queue, because guests still cannot enter the way you should. So uh, hopefully you guys watch that construction video and I have an answer for you. It is my hope that that's what they're doing. And hopefully I should have spoken to this in the construction video that while it would be good news if that were the case, it is bad news for those who are hoping that they'll change their mind uh, about putting L Little Mermaid on Lightning Lane or just in Lightning Lane in general. That's a commitment. If they're building a proper queue, a built-in queue for Ariel's Undersea Adventure, it means they are committed and locked in on Lightning Lane for aerials and in general. I mean, I guess it's not 100% locked in. Because I was just, I just reminded myself, I just remembered that they built a whole FastPass kiosk outside Avengers Campus for the old paper FastPass system. They had it built and it was ready to go. And before they could even, it was just, it was ready to open. And then they completely changed their mind and put out Genie Plus and Lightning Lane negating the need for a fast pass station that they built <laughs> that they had completely built so that was interesting oh, look at that they've opened up the lockers here i was here yesterday shooting construction video and the walls were up but now it is down so this becomes my default video for that construction video that i haven't edited yet how about that it's very fortuitous being here all the all the damn time. 
All right, Grizzly River Run, 25 minutes. That's a healthy looking lightning lane. I mean, this is a pretty quick loader, Grizzly is. Those boats are like, like a dark ride almost, like Little Mermaid. They just keep moving and you can jump, you know, six guests in there at a time or whatever many it is. And so it, it actually is a fairly efficient ride system. But that is a decent sized queue. It's going almost all the way back there to the little office area. I think it might still. That's a good sized queue for a 25 minute wait. That kid is going to find himself at the bottom of the river if, if anything goes wrong. I, I, wow. And that leaves us Condor Flats. We're just going to go this way. Let's go around. No, you know? Check in on Soren over California. It is while we're in the Food and Wine Festival period, it is Soren over California, much to the delight of many, many Disney Parks fans. Seems to be the more well respected version of Soren. No lightning lane out here, nothing. Zip. Oh, there's some right there. Okay, so that's not a little. It's not a lot, but it's not a little. That would be annoying to me. <laughs> if I were in standby, I would not be like, oh, hey, look at that, that's great. Because the standby queue is actually fairly healthy out here as we cruise in. Oh yeah, so the postal wait time says 55. That's up a little from what we saw. I think, what was it, 30? So certainly Lightning Lane has had its effect on this queue. Oh boy, that is just, that's dense. This is a no-go. Seeing a queue of this length, with that queue that we saw out there for Lightning Lane, even though it's shorter than usual, that's still enough to put it, you know, to make this, you know, see people just post it, resting. You don't want to see people resting. Hi. <laughs> even the even lightning lane guys are kind of resting a little bit out here. Not a good look for Soren. So that's how we end this day, with Soren being one of the few outliers, a busy attraction on a day that has been dominated by attractions that are very busy. And the crowd, I mean, it's been light in the streets and light in the queues for the most part. Uh, pretty easy to get food from what I've observed. Queue, I don't see a lot of people waiting in line to get churros or you know anything like that either today. So. Fairly light day, kind of, you know, very much like what we saw at Disneyland last week. And I feel like this will probably continue for a little while. Uh, now recall though, people are gonna talk about the summer. We're in the spring now, spring break's happening. Summer break, people talk about that being a big time for crowds. Last summer was dead. Last summer was completely dead all the way up until Halloween, all the way up until August. So I'm not expecting this to change much Unless Disney changes what they're doing, I don't expect this to change much between now and the Halloween season. There. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like this show and want to show you support, please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash freshbake. You can also follow us on Instagram at underscore freshbake, on Twitter at freshbakedisney, that's fresh with no E, and on TikTok at freshbakedisney. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh bait.